Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video here from the Early Access event for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Today we're taking a look at an updated version of Angel Alive Gain, which now gets access to a Resplendent Angel, a nice reprint, so you don't even need to craft it if you have four copies already. And then we also get to play with Cavern of Souls to fix our colors, so that can help cast our white spells early, and then a later can also still help cast the kicker on Archangel of Wrath while making our angels uncounterable, which can also help out against blue decks. And then we've got some of the usual suspects, a 2-mana Jada, a huge payoff for the Angel deck, of course, letting them enter with additional counters and tapping for mana. We've got Voice of the Blast, which is another payoff for gaining life, which pairs quite well with a Lunark Veteran gaining life when creatures enter. And then at 3-mana Steel Seraph can also give our creatures lifelink, so both helps enable a Resplendent Angel as well as a Voice of the Blast. And then a Resplendent Angel, if we can gain 5 or more life in one turn, will make additional Angel tokens, and also has a nice 6-mana ability that we can use to give it lifelink. And then Inspiring Overseer, another decent angel that gains a bit of life. And then at 4 mana, Archangel of Wrath also plays quite well with both Voice as well as a Resplendent Angel. And finally, Sarah Paragon, a way to recycle some of the cheaper creatures in the deck. So it gets back everything except for Archangel of Wrath. Can even play our 3 mana Steel Seraph, despite it being technically a 6 drop. So we do have that additional late game from Steel Seraph and Archangel as well, which is why we're playing a relatively high land count. Also to eventually animate our Restless Fortress, which can gain more life to enable some more synergies. And then Iganjo offers additional utility as well. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Thalia has a bit of disruption. And then hopefully we'll find some bigger life linkers to synergize with the Resplendent Angel. Opponent on blue white. So turn to Thalia. It could even make it uncounterable here. Or we can make future angels uncounterable. Yeah, let's save Cavern for Angel. Thalia resolves. Could play Overseer before Resplendent. Although having both of them in play would be nice if we eventually used a 6-mana ability. Opponent says Thalia gets lost. And then, yeah, now going for Angel. Play Resplendent, maybe wait to play Overseer until after playing Voice of the Blessed. The map tokens could also help when paired with a lifelink creature. Millennium Calendar. Okay, then now Component Collector. So next up, play another Resplendence. Play Fortress. Still gonna be two turns before we can activate Angel, but next turn I can go Voice plus Overseer. So that seems good. Can also activate Fortress for two life gain. But yeah, getting up to 5 is pretty tricky. Especially without a Bishop of Wings in standard anymore. Our opponent's passing with some mana untapped here. Activates Calendar. And Collector can untap the Calendar, so yeah. Opponent's on the 1000 counters plan. If they've got a Sweeper, we do get punished for overextending here. So the alternative would be just activate Fortress. Or we can use some map tokens. Yeah, maybe that's a bit more prudent here than uh, committing everything. So I'll just go for Fortress. Although if they answer my Fortress, I guess we wouldn't have the mana to activate Angel next turn. Hmm, tricky spot. Maybe I do just go digging with the map. And see what's next. Another voice. Could be alright, but let's dig towards some lifelink. Could make one angel a 5-5. Five five, which plays around Iganjo. And then if we can give it lifelink with Steel Seraph, it can immediately trigger its own ability. Speak of the Devil. Keep that on top. And then I could draw into it with Overseer. 
or we can just uh, attack for eight and take it from there. I guess we'll see. If they have removal on one of my two creatures, then I might commit another creature. If not, I think we hang back. So next turn, by just animating Fortress, we would technically have lethal. So don't even have to go for Steel Seraph. Alright, opponent had the Sunfall, so glad we didn't overextend. So now we want to get back on the board with Voice plus Overseer, I imagine. And play a tapped fortress. Alright, so we've got some pressure in our mana base. Can play six mana Seraph as well. Yeah, sweeper heavy decks are always going to be tough. Thalia helps, Fortress helps as well. But so far, it's not looking too bad. Bones go to Liliana. Which. At this point, could argue that we should keep the flyer, although I can give voice flying with Steel Seraph, of course. And then I guess we wouldn't be gaining any life to grow voice right away. Could also animate Fortress, which would put this up to four. And it can attack past Incubator. Yeah, let's keep voice, I believe. And Genjo. Okay, so if I animate Fortress, that's all I can really do this turn. Could send Voice at their face, Fortress at Liliana, which they can maybe chump or block with the Incubator. And then they would be taking four, and we could threaten lethal next turn. Seems worth a shot. If they have instant speed removal on Fortress, that would be bad. Alright, we get to attack. And then next turn it doesn't quite fly yet, so it's only when we have four or more counters. Their opponent lets Liliana go, chumps, still at 7. But next turn, Voice plus Fortress are still lethal. One card left in hand. Is it anything useful? We don't know yet. Let's animate Fortress, and then now we can still play Steel Seraph. So I may as well play it before attacking. So we get the extra bonus. Can give voice vigilance to play around a wandering emperor. Attack. And yeah, there's a wandering emperor. So they can either make a blocker chump or exile fortress. And our opponent's jumping. So activate counter up to 120 counters, activate again. There's still a couple points short. And Deliush goes digging, can they find a sweeper? If they do, the game goes on. Now voice will gain flying as soon as we trigger fortress. So could once again give voice a vigilance. Now Archangel should just be able to end the game. And using Cavern we can make it uncounterable. And that'll grow voice as well. And did we get there? Yes, we did. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Double voice into Overseer can grow them. 
And then an Archangel can help as well, facing turn one scout. Ooh, Jada. That's also quite promising. Do we want to play a Jada first? We'll definitely help get our Archangel in play sooner. Although part of me still likes playing voice first so we can get the value of Overseer later. But uh, against Mono Green, I think we're safe enough deploying Jada. And then that extra mana could also come in handy. Hulking Raptor, speaking of extra mana. Take two. And now a Resplendent Angel. So... Yeah, if we play Resplendent now... Even if I draw a land next turn, I wouldn't be able to... Gain the five required. So... Might be better off playing an Overseer after attacking. Not play my land in case we draw tapped land. And then it will enter as a three-powered creature, so it can hold off the Raptor. Alright, Steel Seraph is nice. So now, probably still name Angel, even though it's going to make it trickier to play double voice in one turn. Yeah, now with Steel Seraph, with the extra counters from Jada, we could eventually get to enable Resplendent. Of triplets in the meantime, pretty scary. And another Archangel, so no land, sadly. So in that case, do we Resplendent Angel, or do we maybe um, play an Archangel of Wrath? Which would enter as a 5-powered life linker, so that's pretty solid. Yeah, that seems good enough, so we'll attack first. And then next turn, by attacking with Archangel, we enable Resplendent as well. So not the curve I originally had in mind, but hopefully it still gets the job done. Now the Gruff Triplets, especially if they have some sacrifice effects here, could represent a lot of damage. Another Glimpse gets a Forest. And the Triplets attack. I think we're still blocking here. Don't know if there's a real difference between blocking a token or the real one. And a Spinoderm is next. Okay, so... Now we've got 5 mana total. Can play... Voice and then Resplendent Angel. And then we could attack first since this just checks end of turn if we gain 5. Could have also considered leaving back Inspiring Overseer. Alright, so we've got some larger blockers back. Bonus is at 3, so just need one flyer to cross the finish line. Titan, I guess now, can gain life and present a large reach creature. But yeah, the damage has been done. Can line up our blocks. We're at 11. And then... Doesn't matter too much how we end things. Maybe a doubly kicked Archangel. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn to Jada is going to go a long way. Facing Jund. Okay, so could also start with Thalia. Since we're not in a hurry to deploy Jada, even though it would set up turn 3 Paragon. And this can maybe soak up some removal and slow down the opponent. Hammer Skull points towards 
the uh, combo deck with fight rigging. Okay, so veteran plus voice as an option, or we can deploy Jada. Maybe we get voice going, get those as large as possible. So we can maybe contest the hammer skull. Thalia could still be good if her opponent plays fight rigging, since they would have to tap out for it and then be unable to cast any non-creature spells because of the one additional mana they have to pay. I'll take six. Hammer Skull is stunned. And then next turn we can double spell Voice and Jada. So Veteran's actually pretty important. We're gonna sack Hammer Skull, put me to nine. Okay. Name Angel, play voice, and then Jada. Back up to 11. And we're presenting lethal for next turn. Can even animate our fortress. Thrill Seeker, also nice combo with a hammer skull, of course. So I think Animate's Fortress is fine. And Smash. GG's, that was a quick one. Voice flies. And that does it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. No new cards, but double Veteran into Voice of the Blessed is quite nice. So, might actually want to name uh, something other than Angel. Got lots of humans. This is Spirit Cleric. Let's keep it simple. Just play Caves. And then maybe go for turn 2 Thalia. And then turn 3 Veteran plus Voice. Turn 1 Scouts. Put on an Explorer deck. Alright, especially now with another Courtyard. One of these doesn't have to name Angel. So let's name human. Don't know if Thalia will be slowing the opponent down too much. But uh, yeah, I guess twists and turns now cost two mana. So blue green explore. Now they get to scry before they explore. And Archangel will be great. So play veteran into voice. And immediately pick up two counters. Thalia can attack. Ideally find something else to play next turn, so we can actually play Archangel with Kicker, but if we don't have anything else going on, still grows voice, makes it fly. That's good enough. The flexibility of these kicker and prototype creatures is very nice indeed. Fly over for six. I have seen the Merfolk deck playing with a Larcenist as a removal spell, so that could potentially interact here. Even though it's not a Merfolk itself. For now a Spelunker, that's fine. Map token lets them explore again. So they're making some large creatures, but not larger than voice. And now a steel seraph. It's gonna be the final nail. Can give Thalia flying, and that should just be game over right now. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with what looks like a keep. Veteran is awesome alongside voice. Might take us a while to eventually gain five life in one turn, but one can hope. Eventually, of course, can use a six man ability, so don't always need outside assistance, but every now and then having a Steel Seraph or an Archangel of Wrath, 
makes things easier. We'll start with a tapped fortress. And then if we go tapped sanctum, I can um, save cavern to name angel, otherwise I can name uh, cleric here and then play voice. Next turn go veteran plus voice, which I also don't hate. And then we have Steel Seraph to go with Angel. So getting this to 5 power and then giving it lifelink might be the way forward. Our opponent on Dinosaurs. So we get to attack for 3. And then next turn, Steel Seraph. Okay, maybe start by giving voice lifelink. And then turn after Resplendent Angel. Might see a bit of removal. Carnosaur takes out one voice. Luckily have a second one. So yeah, the dinosaur deck on the back foot. Now we can name Angel. Still liking Steel Seraph. And then now voice is going to be a lot harder to take out with a burn spell. The dinosaur deck does have a few flying creatures. But uh, probably not large enough to compete with voice, especially once it picks up another counter. It's going to be a hammer skull instead. Okay, time for Resplendent Angel, and hopefully we get to live the dream. Alternatively, Archangel of Wrath can take out Lore Keeper, but we want to start making tokens, so give this a lifelink. And yeah, we get to make our token, although honestly probably didn't need it to win this game. But it doesn't hurt. Fancy new art as well. But uh, don't be afraid to use the original if you have it already. And yeah, that does it. Decent start from the dinosaur deck, but just couldn't keep up. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand is a little bit awkward. Two Thalias, only two lands. No huge way of gaining life with Resplendent Angel. I'll take a mulligan. Okay, this I can try. One voice can go. And then we're looking at turn three, maybe Steel Seraph. Ooh, Jada. Yeah, let's go with Jada. Just the extra counters are going to be very helpful in making a Angel token later. Although against Black White, we can expect some interaction. For now, a Marionette, so more of a graveyard deck. That's fine. Patch up can bring stuff back. Back up Jada. So we can play Steel Seraph here. And give this lifelink. Rebooter, so kind of a low to the ground sacrifice deck perhaps, Vran. Yeah, they might struggle with our large flyers. Now we get to play Resplendent Angel, and then next turn we'll be able to hopefully make a token. Give this lifelink. If we had a Lunark Veteran, we would have gained five total. So we'll see if they have some removal here. A Ratadrabic, I don't mind. And uh, could block the Freebooter, but honestly, can just take the one. Okay, so play Voice before attacking. Could also play a Replacement Jada just to give it extra counters, but I can do that second main. 
Give that lifelink attack. Bones at one. And now play Jada. And make an angel token. Not bad. If our opponent somehow has a sunfall to exile all creatures, we can still maybe get there with fortress. Double Vran. Okay, that's pretty nice with Ratadrabic. So now sacking creature can drain for four. But yeah, opponent still seems very dead. Alright, sweet. Alright, so we got to see this Angel life gain deck in action. It's not really breaking any new ground, definitely weaker compared to some of the counterparts in other formats like Explorer, where you've got access to Collected Company, but that's always going to be the case. Could try Kalos Reconstruction in this build as another way of finding some of your 3-mana Angels, but it doesn't have the best synergy with our uh, Steel Seraph, which still counts as a 6-drop for uh, reconstruction purposes, otherwise I might have given that a shot as well. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.